everybody out there. Thank you for coming to our presentation today, which is called Leading by Example, Opening Up Library Tutorials. It is our hope that by the end of the session today, you should be able to do the following three things. Evaluate your existing institutional materials and or resources for their potential as an OER, formulate a manageable process to convert your existing material to an OER, and articulate how to begin your own OER creation. My name is Cisco Boschman, and I will be co-presenting today with my colleague, Jacqueline Chambers-Page. We both work as library facilitators for information literacy at Niagara College Canada in the beautiful Niagara region. Niagara College Canada is a mid-sized, publicly funded college of applied arts and technology with a total enrollment of 10,500 full-time students who are enrolled in over 130 diploma, graduate certificate, apprenticeship, and bachelor's degrees programs. NC Libraries offers in-person as well as virtual support services for students, faculty, and staff at both institutional campuses. Through our positions at the college, both Jackie and I are tasked with supporting faculty in the discovery, development, and use of open educational resources. This is the only formalized role or position at the college that is focused on the promotion of OER, and it makes up less than 35% of our working portfolio, which means many of our efforts are very much at the grassroots level. Of the 14 traditional roles listed in Bradley's thesis, support roles for community college librarians approaching the chasm that librarians play in the promotion of OER, NC Libraries has mainly focused on the following five roles, advocacy, discovery, licensing and copyright assistance, professional development, and recognition. For example, we advocate for OER while recognizing college champions through Open Education Week activities, such as hosting an open textbook petting zoo, as well as hosting a panel discussion on OER where local adopters, adapters, and creators of OER are honored, while also giving them a chance to share their experiences with others. NC Libraries endeavors to ensure that high quality OER are discoverable by faculty through the ongoing curation of our OER research guide, which is a resource that we highly promoted during our Open Text Tuesday professional development webinars that we held with faculty over the summer in response to the COVID-19 pandemic and the increased need for accessible teaching resources. OER are always top of mind in our other roles as information literacy facilitators, and especially as copyright support for the college. Recent changes at the college to more of an online delivery model as a result of the pandemic has met with an increased need by faculty at Niagara College to use OER, which has further been met with increased questions from faculty about how OER are licensed and how their licenses affect their use. Despite these endeavors, both Jackie and I are eager to expand NC Library's OER portfolio to include the curation, description, and above all, the publication of open educational resources, partly to make better use of our library's digital institutional repository, and partly to expand the visibility of OER at Niagara College. Specifically, we are interested in the curation, description, and publication of OER textbooks, which have been slow to be adopted at the college, with only two known instances of professors adopting or adapting an OER textbook for their courses. Currently, Niagara College's financial aid office estimates that the cost of student textbooks to be anywhere from 500 to 2,500 Canadian dollars a year, which is a significant amount of money considering yearly tuition and ancillary fees at the college starts at 4,000 Canadian dollars. Being aware that the cost of textbooks can be a deterrent to student success has been another motivating factor for trying to get faculty to produce their own OER for their students, as many of the applied fields of study taught at the school don't have existing OER textbooks that can be easily adopted for classroom use. According to Stephanie Sterling Brasley's doctoral dissertation, Advancing Faculty Adoption of Open Educational Resources in Higher Education, systems that appear complex are less likely to be adopted by newcomers. As such, the technical machinations of creating an OER textbook could certainly be a barrier to faculty from deciding to publish their own. Knowing this, Jackie and I decided to create our own OER textbook in order to demystify the process of creating one, both for ourselves and for other faculty at the school, thus transforming our roles from promoters of OER to creators of OER. 
Since our main role at the college is as information literacy facilitators, we decided to create an OER ebook that taught information literacy skills to college students using online information literacy modules that we had already adapted from the now defunct CLIPT project at Western Oregon University. An excellent opportunity arose for us recently when we obtained free Pressbooks accounts through the generosity of eCampus Ontario. We were eager to obtain first-hand experience with Pressbooks to help faculty interested in creating their own OER, and this seemed like the perfect moment to combine our desire to advocate for open educational resources through experience with our interest in presenting the content of our information literacy modules in an alternate format. The book itself is divided into four sections. There's the introduction to college research, identifying and discovering resources, academic integrity overview, and academic integrity citations. Each of our modules is featured as a chapter within these sections. Let's take a look at the avoiding plagiarism chapter. Each chapter begins with a set of learning outcomes before launching into the content. After each piece of content, we include an assessment to help students reinforce their learning. And our hope is by presenting this material in a familiar textbook style, students will find it easy to navigate. And by putting the content into a cohesive package rather than a series of disjointed modules, that faculty will be able to better incorporate the material into their courses. So we launched the book in fall 2020, and we're still currently in the data gathering phase, but feedback has been very positive so far. The latest descendant in this OER information literacy family is our online escape room contest. In order to promote the handbook to students and faculty, we developed four contests based on the book's four sections. Participants complete puzzles to obtain clues and solve a mystery. We are releasing each contest throughout the fall 2020 term to create sustained interest in the handbook. And the initial response has been great. Some faculty members have chosen to incorporate escape rooms into their courses. The escape rooms are also licensed under CC by 4.0 and a link to find them can be found in the video description. Throughout the lifespan of this project, we managed to experience what it was like to adopt, adapt, and create OER. We started by adopting a series of Creative Commons licensed modules from an external source, which we ended up adapting for our users. Then using the content of these modules to create the basis for our online handbook. And most recently, our online escape rooms. We will likely continue to grow this content into new learning objects for students in the future. And all of this was possible because the original material that inspired us was Creative Commons licensed. Our experiences with this project have given us the confidence to advocate for OER as consumer and creator. We hope you've enjoyed hearing about our project and the process behind it. Our goal with this presentation was to help you overcome any anxiety or intimidation with working with OER by demonstrating how easily you can begin. We'd like to end today by sharing a few key points we have realized throughout our experiences. First, take advantage of what's already available to you. Check with your library to see if they already have resources in place to help you with OER. You might not be aware of how much support, including access to editing software, is available and waiting for you. Another thing to consider is reviewing the learning material you've already created for its potential as an OER. Have you created something that you would like to share? Have you created something that you think others would benefit from or that you would like to share with others for collaboration? A lot of work goes into creating these materials, so why not share them with the world? And finally, don't be afraid to experiment and play. 
Adapting an OER might lead you to exploring new software or platforms. You may be inspired to create something that never would have occurred to you otherwise. We would love to hear your OER advice. If you have a minute, please visit our Padlet and share some key points you've discovered from working with OER. The Padlet link is also in the video description. And thank you for watching. Feel free to contact us anytime. We look forward to hearing from you.